Hello and welcome to Portfolio Matters. In today's My Worst Trade, I will be confessing my sins about a premature exit. And this episode is all going to be all about sell discipline. Now, we're not going to do a full disclaimer. We're not recommending any stocks or anything. But as always, do your own research. A full disclaimer can be found at the end. OK, so the summary of this episode of My Worst Trade is going to be that sell discipline is essential. There are lots of different possible exit strategies, all of which have some validity. The point is you have to choose one and stick to it. Share prices can rise and fall much further than you might imagine. And therefore, sell discipline is essential because in particular, cyclical stocks can rise further than you might think and fall further than you might think. And in this case, they did both. And thank you to members of our Discord who helped we with the technical analysis because technical analysis can help you time your entry and exit points. And as we go through this, you'll see that I actually prepared the majority of this presentation a year ago. And I was then intending to use technical analysis live to help me exit my position in ExxonMobil. We'll see what happened. And finally, accept that you will never get the precise bottom or the precise top. Have your strategy, stick to it. OK, so this is my trade in Forexpo. And I bought it back in April 2020. You'll remember that is the depths of the pandemic. And it worked out incredibly well. I had set a price target of around three pounds. And in December, i.e. only eight months later, it hit that target, giving me a return of 135%. And I was very happy to sell. And my reasoning was that the peak of the last cycle, the shares had peaked at around three pounds. And as we've talked many times on the weekly, iron ore is abundant in the Earth's crust. And whenever the price spikes, you invariably get a supply response. So I just don't believe that iron ore prices can stay high for any long period of time. And so I set my price target as the peak of the last cycle and it was hit. But whoops, actually, it kept on going. It kept on going a long way. It kept on going to five pounds. So essentially, if I had remained in the trade, I would have made more than double what I actually made, I could have made 287% instead of the 135% I did make. So the question then becomes, could I have done better using technical analysis? Is there a better exit strategy? And so my exit strategy was based on you know, observation of the peak of the last cycle and you know, instinct, really. So let's look at a few um, popular exit strategies. And the first one is to use the 20 day moving average and sell when the share price drops below the moving average and buy when it rises above that. Well, that generates a lot of signals and that is not my trading style. And if you are trading, in an account where you pay capital gains tax, this is incredibly inefficient. You'll be paying stamp duty of 0.5% every time you buy and then CGT on every trade. This would generate far too many trades. Now, you could use it if you were trading in a spread betting account where you don't pay CGT or stamp duty. Now, the 50-day moving average would have done 
much, much better. If I'd used the rule that you buy it when it crosses the 50 day and sell it when it crosses back, I would have got out of four pounds 41. So that would be vastly better. The trouble with the last one is that the daily share price is very volatile and it could briefly tick down below the 50 day. And so I think a more reliable indicator would be to use the five day moving average and the 50 day moving average and sell when the five day moving average crosses below the 50. There are lots of basic um, share price chart tools, um, platforms that you can use that can do all this. I mean, I think I got this from Trading View. Now, if you were to use the 200 day moving average, that again would have done much better than my exit strategy, which you remember was at three pounds. I would have got out at around three pounds 53, but you would not have got out anywhere near five pounds. So what at what happened? Well, ultimately, I was right to get out because the price of Forexpo was already collapsing before the Russian invasion of Ukraine and had crossed back below three pounds. And then when the Russian invasion of Ukraine happened, it absolutely collapsed, collapsing to one pound at its lows. So ultimately, I was right that very high share prices cannot be sustained in the iron ore industry because there is a supply response. But what I got wrong was the volatility was much greater than I expected. So having done that work, I then thought, well, let's do this live. And so I presented most of this. So I created most of this presentation back in March 2022. And I knew then that I was looking for an exit in my oil company position. And in particular, I was looking at ExxonMobil. And the reasons that I was looking to exit my oil company position was I thought the macro environment was very uncertain. Oil equities had had an astonishingly good run and it was very difficult to calculate the fair value given all the uncertainties. What you do know is that very high oil prices tend to kill the world economy, which brings the oil price back down. So this is a very cyclical sector. And so I was looking once again to time my way out of what I consider to be a highly cyclical trade. And having done that analysis, I stated, and this is a chart I made back in March, that I was going to use the 50 day moving average to time my exit. But I didn't. So this is the price chart of ExxonMobil when I put this chart pack together. And you'll see that it was then at 85.54. And that is the 50 day moving average. So my plan was to close out when the two crossed. And I had bought it back in November 2020 at $44.59. So I was doing well. But the trouble with using the 50 day moving average is that it generates quite a lot of sell signals. And instead of using technical analysis, ultimately, I chose to exit at what I thought was fair value or the top of the cycle. So again, you see, using the five day moving average when it crosses the 50 would have again generated several buy and sell signals. And if you pay capital gains tax, that is fundamentally inefficient. You don't want to do that. You want in one cycle, you want to buy once, you want to sell once. It's different if you're trading with CFDs or spread betting. So what did I do? Well, I actually closed out during May 2022 when you see oil companies in general were having an extraordinary surge. And I thought that surge looks like the blow off top in a cyclical move. And so I sold the shares progressively starting at 95 
and finishing just above 100. Now, since then, Exxon has actually continued up and it's currently at about 110. But I don't have any regrets about my exit strategy. This is a cyclical trade. And I think as the world economy goes into recession, that the price of Exxon will come down and I will be able to buy in below my exit point. Now, so the question then becomes, could I have done better using technical analysis, using more sophisticated technical analysis? So, and thank you very much to Simon W and to Spear Ear on a Discord channel for their help in putting this together. And Simon W, who uses a lot of technical analysis, would recommend customizing the moving averages that you use for each individual stock. And so in this case, he would have recommended using the 17 week moving average and the 14 week moving average and timing when they cross. Now you see that actually it generates a lot of trades, but it would have recommended I stay in this position. It would not have recommended I close when I did. And if we just look at the period that I was in the trade, it would have said that I should have got in at 181 and it would have closed out at about 308. So it would have made a 70% return. When in fact, I made 135% return. So it would have done worse than I did. But if you look at the trades at other times, you'll see generally this strategy works. Generally, it gets you in to profitable trades and it doesn't generate that many trading signals. So I think this, this works, but you then have to stick with it and importantly when it doesn't work and it generates a sell signal and you're losing money you absolutely have to get out and accept your loss you'll see that in 2013 it would have generated quickly a buy signal and then a sell signal and you would have lost quite a lot of money in the process so it's not infallible now if we look at forexpo and using the 17 week moving average, that again actually would have generated a sell signal pretty much at the top. And the 45 week moving average is less successful. So if I'd used the 10 week moving average and the 50 week moving average, then I would have made an 86% return, which is lower than the one what I actually made. Returning to ExxonMobil, there are a lot of different technical analysis methods you can use. And I got Simon W to try and explain this to me and these moving stops, etc. Frankly, this is very detailed. There's a, a channel on the Discord where people talk about technical analysis. If you're interested in this and using technical analysis to time your entries and exits, I suggest you join the Discord and there's a community there. We'll be very happy to discuss it. So in summary, I think that using simple moving averages, and I haven't done any of the other stuff, actually works. In general, it has a decent hit rate of timing, entry and exits. It's not infallible, but I think if you commit to using technical analysis, you have to stick to it. So when it tells you to get out of a losing position, you have to do it. I'd also say that it may cause you to over trade depending on which moving averages you choose. And fundamentally, you, I think there is a bias towards choosing technical analysis strategies which worked in the past. And the assumption is that they will continue to work in the future and choosing the moving average which worked for a particular stock and assuming that the characteristics 
that caused that to work in the past will continue into the future. So, so in summary, I think having cell discipline is essential, but when it came to it, I actually preferred having my own fundamental based exit strategy, which worked. It did generate, I could have made a lot more money, but I think ultimately in order to stick to any strategy, you have to really believe in it. And ultimately when it came to selling my Exxon Mobil position, I trusted my own judgment more than I did technical analysis because I am essentially unfamiliar with technical analysis and therefore I was not confident in it. Richard, your thoughts? So I think um, it's an interesting, it's an interesting subject. The the use of um, moving averages. I mean, it, it retrospectively, you think, well, why didn't I buy there and sell then? But uh, very often at the time, it's not at all obvious. And if Simon W clearly it sort of makes uh, um, makes a big effort to try and get these analyses right, and uh, it's very interesting. But it also noticed that he was using resistance levels as as well, and moves into a realm of quite a significant degree of complexity. Um, I mean, I've dabbled with moving averages myself, and I always feel that retrospectively they give good results, but prospectively they're not so good. That's partly to do with my personal trading psychology. Um, I do think that the having some sort of realistic exit point in mind is actually a sound strategy, generally speaking. There's always going to be the risk that you don't achieve that level or that you overshoot that level mm. but in a sense you it doesn't matter because if you've if you've correctly analyzed that a, a security is undervalued and you've bought it and then you recognize when you think it's reached fair value and you sell it i actually don't think i don't think you can criticize that strategy and then retrospectively you can look at it and say well i should have should have hold on to it for another three months three or four months using information that wasn't available to you at the time yeah um so i think i think they could i think these things could stop you doing making seriously bad uh judgments um if you're careful with them so i, I personally i like um using channels and and um um ranges um and I think that helps me sort of stabilize my view of of what a stock is actually doing, not what I wish it was doing. Yeah, and I think that's useful. Um, you can, I think, you can sort of disappear down a rabbit hole with moving averages if you're not careful, because mm -hmm. you can you can always find a moving average that fits retrospectively. And now I'm not disrespecting what Simon says, and I'm sure that if he, you know, if he's got a technique that works for him, I think that's that's fantastic. Personally, I think it's actually quite difficult. Um, so, and people show very alluring charts where, oh, it was absolutely clear that you should have, if you'd done this and you'd done that, you'd have made a great deal of money. And I think it's a lot harder in practice to do that. So what I would say, Keith, is you did jolly well with both Forex Pro and uh, Exxon Mobil. And whilst it would have been better retrospectively to, um, to have sold at, at different points or at different points, at the time you didn't have that information. And so, yeah. I would say, you know, it, it's good to have profitable trades. No, I, I, you know, having looked at it and having done the um, looked at technical analysis, I mean, I think the point, the key point is I did get out. And mm -hmm. you're right about, you know, I sold it when I was considered it to be overvalued. And you're right. I didn't. Have, obviously, you don't know what's going to happen next. And it just became very, very overvalued. Yeah. But that ultimately unwound. I think if one thing you could say is that when there is a strong trend like that, and there was an extremely strong trend, then perhaps you should use a moving average or something and just let it run for a few months. Because if I if I hadn't been watching it all the time and I just kind of let it, you know, yeah. let it run, then you know when it gets to four or five pounds, you think, well, that's silly. I, I'll get out now. Whereas I got out. You know, essentially, pretty much the first opportunity once it was overvalued. And the other strategy you can adopt, I suppose, is you can you can say, well, I, I believe it's reached fair value, but it still seems to have been in an uptrend. So I'll sell fifty percent of my position, and I'll hold the other fifty percent, for example, and and that can work. But again, you know, it, it's 
but on the basis of hindsight, well, well, clearly you should have done that. But you didn't yeah. have that information at the time. Yeah. So it, it is very difficult. And and then the danger with sort of selling out, make a bit of a profit and selling 50% is that if that's what you, if, if you adopt that as a standard practice and you just think, I've made a profit, I'm going to get out of half of it, you're actually limiting the, the profit you can make. Yeah. Yeah. And also the thing is, I I have a big problem holding positions I don't fundamentally believe in because uh, we've talked about this before. If I don't believe in a, in a stock anymore, then if it ticks down 5% from where the price is now, yeah. I'm going to sell it. Yeah, because you're That's, yeah, because intellectually you've made your decision. Yeah. So I will then systematically sell it at a worse price than I'm getting right now. And yeah. so I'd rather sell it all now. Yeah. I mean, the real big regret is if you sell something when it's gone up 50% and it goes up 500%, isn't <laughs> yes. it? You've, you've made a, you've, you've lost a lot out there. I don't know how you avoid that, actually, because yeah. I also, you know, you can look at charts retrospectively again, where, where you know, it was clear that you should have bought at X and then hung on for a 10 a tenfold gain but in in the middle of it it had a 60 percent drawdown well mm. it's really difficult to hold through a 60 percent drawdown unless you're really intimate with what's going on and you understand clearly what's going on and you know that you are correct and holding through something like that is very difficult so yeah yeah I, don't, well, I, I think don't... in that case what you you know you could well use moving averages um but you just have to have discipline to get back in you know exactly. the trouble is you know, having looked at those moving averages, they do generate a few buy and sell signals. And mm -hmm. then you have to accept that, you know, you're going to do that. But if you, it also means that you have to have the capital to get back in and out. So it means you've always got to have some cash on the yeah. portfolio. Yeah. And then the other thing you could do is you could say, well, I'm only going to use the signal if, there's, if the stock is in an uptrend. Uh, but then how, how do you know the stock's in an uptrend? What, what technical analysis are you going to use to determine whether it's in an uptrend, mm. having completed its downtrend? And, and I noticed one of the signals, I think it was on XM, there was a, there was a big downtrend, but it had, a, it had a, a buy signal that was wrong. And you can say, well, you shouldn't have bought that because it's in a downtrend. But at the time, you didn't know whether it was a trend reversal. Yeah. Really yeah. tricky. I mean, I, I, like you, Keith, I tend to be view these things on a fundamental basis of what is what is the economic rationale for me buying this and then what is the economic rationale uh, to sell it yeah and i think that's that's a sound guide i think yeah okay well i think in summary what we are saying is that sell discipline is really important but it has to be something that you're comfortable with and are actually going to stick to and I, what i found interesting in doing this was intellectually i had decided that using the 50 day moving average would have worked for for expo and therefore i should use it but then in um exxon when it came to it it actually generated two premature exit signals and i ignored them because I didn't actually fundamentally believe in it. And then I sold it when, you know, on my fundamental analysis, essentially. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And, um, you know, you did well and you shouldn't have any regret. Yeah, if, if, all my, if only all my <laughs> trades worked yeah. out like that. Yeah. The, the next uh, My Worst Trade will be on buy discipline. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. yes. Yes. Yeah. We'll leave yeah. it there. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Keith. Really all right. Okay. Thank you all for watching. Please, can you press like and subscribe to the channel? And it's goodbye from Richard Weiser. And it's goodbye from Keith Jordan. And thank you for putting that together, Keith. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Full disclaimer. The material and information contained in this podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon for making a business, legal or any other decision. We may own or have a financial interest in any securities mentioned. Listeners should conduct their own research or consult a professional investment advisor before making any decisions regarding topics mentioned on the show. Whilst we endeavour to ensure that the information presented on the show is correct, 
We make no representations or warranties of any kind, expressed or implied, with respect to the podcast and website or to any information, products, services or related graphics discussed or presented in the podcast or website. Any reliance you place on such material is strictly at your own risk. You are solely responsible for the investment decisions you make. We will not be responsible for any errors or omissions in the podcast or website, including in articles or postings, for hyperlinks embedded in messages, or for any results obtained from use of such information. Nor will we be liable for any loss or damage, including consequential damages, if any, caused by a reader's reliance on any information provided by the podcast or website. Please do not listen to the podcast if you do not accept self-responsibility for your actions.